Good evening and welcome to our Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. If you could please join us as we rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's call the roll. Councilmember Gaspoviak. Here. Councilmember Kicker. Here. Councilmember Demmer. Councilmember Geisler. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Councilmember Wells. Here. Mayor Cook. Here. Two absent, Demmer and Johnson. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, <laughs> can I make a motion to adopt the agenda? Sorry. All right. Motion by Geisler, second by Wells. We're going to move right along with those two yeah. missing. <laughs> to adopt the agenda. Um, any changes or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the agenda is adopted. And item one on this evening's agenda is to get a presentation from Maggie Snow and is it Becky Walpole? Correct. Oh, um, about the Anoka County Library. So if you would uh, go ahead and take the mic there. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Mayor and council members, um, my name is Becky Walpole and I am the branch manager at the Crooked Lake Library here in Coon Rapids. Um, thank you very much for letting me come tonight to talk a little bit about how the library serves the Coon Rapids community. We are champions of youth, presenting literacy-based story times, summer reading, free programs for people of all ages. One of our biggest successes at the library is our volunteer program. Um, teens are invited to come and volunteer for a few hours a week at the library. And even though they are helping us very much, it is our sneaky way of teaching them vital job skills that will serve them later in life. Um, students aged 12 to 17 are invited to come and um, help us out at the library. This program runs year round, but during the summer months, we have about 25 students come and um, participate in the program. Um, they have to fill out an online job application, participate in an interview process. They have to show up for their work shifts. They have to um, learn basic skills that serve the library, um, shelving, uh, program help, that kind of thing. Um, they have to uh, attend volunteer staff meetings. They contribute to the welcoming atmosphere of the library, and they have to accurately fill out their timesheets. These are all job skills that are going to serve them very well later in life. Um, we post their photos next to the staff photos back in the staff workroom so that they know and they feel that they are part of our staff and part of our team. Um, and we are often then asked to serve as references for them as they then apply for real jobs or for college or for whatever they plan on doing after their high school experience. Our libraries also um, reach beyond our buildings. Um, we meet community members where they're at, at school or at the senior center or community parks or the farmer's market, uh, local daycares and many other places. Um, this is the time of year where we go to lots and lots of school visits to talk to kids about our summer reading program. Um, we also do a lot of after school family nights so we can talk to families about getting library cards and about all of the services and materials that they can access uh, through their local library. We do monthly tech tutoring at the Senior Center helping participants do everything from navigate their new phones and tablets. Um, to helping them learn skills that help them navigate the world as it is now. Um, my favorite off-site visit this year was to a local health and wellness fair. I got to talk to well over 100, uh, mostly seniors, who aren't regular library visitors, but were really excited about everything that we have to offer. I gave away every brochure, every business card, every booklet that I brought with me. I completely ran out of color changing pencils. Um, they, they were absolutely delighted with things that they never imagined that the library had to offer them. Um, 
they are influencers in their families and their communities, their clubs and churches and neighborhoods, and I was super excited to get them excited about the library. At the library, we are community builders. Um, through the library, patrons connect with ideas, information, and inspiration, regardless of their age, their background, or their economic level. Uh, one of the ways that we see this is um, after story time, families hang around, um, they play with their children in our Play Matters spaces, and they connect with other um, parents in the community, helping to build that community, um, that time that they spend in sharing their, their experiences and their, their lives with each other is every bit as important as the literacy tips that we give out during our story times. Um, community connections happen at the library every single day. Recently on a Saturday at about 3.30 in the afternoon, I looked around our library and we had 10 people in our meeting room aged between 20 and 35 playing one of the board games that the library circulates. They were in there having a great time. Um, we were, um, there were two people at the desk asking for help finding materials. Every single one of our computers was filled um, with people applying for jobs or doing whatever um, work that they needed to do on those computers. There was one young man sitting next to an older gentleman who was struggling to open up an email and print something off and the young man was leaning over and helping him. They had never met before and the old man was so grateful that they embraced on the way out the door. Um, the, the, there was one staff member was helping a lady copy documents for an adoption Another one was on the phone trying to help a grandmother find books on divorce for her seven-year-old grandson. Um, there were three families of diverse backgrounds in the Play Matters space. All of them were playing together beautifully. There were two little girls reading to one of the library babies. It was wonderful. Um, one of our regulars was sitting by at the door after her, with her little bag of books to take home waiting for her uh, project mobility ride. These are ways that we serve this community. Um, this is ways that the library helps build that community, and this is why I love my job. <laughs> Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Becky while she's here? That's. The, oh, go ahead. Just. Thank you for, for what you do in the community. It's, it's, a, it's a great place, and I love the report and all of the wonderful things that you're doing and helping the, the citizens of the community. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's the library. I normally slip in and out incognito with my <laughs> hat down, you know, because you're not getting all dressed up just to go to the library. Yeah. Hey, Mayor! Oh! As come as you are. <laughs> thank you very much for what you do there. Thanks thank you. Here. We go. Item number two, um, we're actually going to combine items numbers two and three. We have Poppy Day proclamations for American Legion Post 334 and the Auxiliary, and for VFW Post 9625 and the Auxiliary. So is that okay if we bring everybody up at once? Welcome. I think that's working now. There we go. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the proclamation, and then you'll actually get this later from our city clerk when it has the fancy little gold sticker on it and signatures, right? Will you just take care of it now? Okay. Very good. All right. Um, so whereas, and I'm going to just hold this up here a little bit. There we go. Whereas, the Coon Rapids American Legion Post 334 and Auxiliary, and the Coon Rapids Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 9625, and the Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary, have adopted the Poppy 
as their commemorative symbol, and whereas the memorial poppy, assembled by disabled veterans, pays respectful tribute to those killed in war, and also benefits the living veterans and their families, and whereas public donations for poppies fund rehabilitation programs within each local community that benefits veterans, their families, and ultimately our state and nation, and whereas the basic purpose of the annual distribution of poppies is eloquently reflected in the desire to honor the dead by helping the living. Now, therefore, I, Jerry Cook, Mayor of the City Coon Rapids, on behalf of the Coon Rapids City Council, hereby proclaim May 24th, 2019 to be Poppy Day, urging all citizens of Coon Rapids to recognize the merits of this cause by contributing generously and to wear a poppy as mute evidence of our gratitude to the men and women of this country who have risked their lives in defense of the freedoms which we continue to enjoy as American citizens. That was the same day, it was all the same, right? Okay, awesome, if you would introduce yourselves. I'm Diane Bowman, I'm the Poppy Chairman for the Coon Rapids American Legion Auxiliary. My name is Teresa Shumway, I'm the Commander of Post 9625, um, and uh, there is nobody else here with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Ann Stephan, and I'm the Auxiliary President for the Coon Rapids Unit 334. And where will folks be able to get poppies? Where will they be able to find them? On May 17th and 18th, uh, the American Legion will be at uh, Cub on Northdale and Cub in Riverdale and Walmart in Riverdale. And the VFW will be at um, Festival Foods on Bunker Lake Boulevard, Walmart on Bunker Lake Boulevard, and County Market on Round Lake Boulevard. Okay. Very good. Sure All right. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to tell us about these or about what's going on? Now's your opportunity. You have a mic and a camera. <laughs> and the floor. <laughs> The puppies do so much for veterans in this area. People don't realize if a homeless veteran comes into the VFW or the American Legion and they, they can prove they're a veteran and they say, hey, I have no place to sleep tonight or no place to go or I need $10 for gas, that's what the poppy fund is for. So when you give, just think about that. It's you know, just a dollar or something, but it's helping so much and it stays right here in Coon Rapids. It doesn't go, there's no overhead. Every single bit of it is counted for and I can show you everywhere, every bit of it is spent. But it has helped so many veterans in the last year, um, so many with everything. That is so tremendous. That truly is honor the dead by helping the living. I love that. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you and we'll have the uh, Proclamations for you to go Thank tonight, you. I guess. Okay. Oh, look at that. Thank you. 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 I have one from last year. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Can I contribute? Thank you. Thank you very much. And for you, sir, it's a missing man's high tack. Oh, my. It has a poppy on it. Oh, that is awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks. See you next year. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Well, that's the, uh, the kind of service that really helps the community, really builds a community, you know, and this is wonderful. I think we're onto the cornerstone of civilization. Sure. I think you're right. National Public Works. Ah, I forgot my stoplights. 
I got a little set of stoplights I was going to put up there and plug in for this. And I forgot them on my counter at home. Always next year. Next year. <laughs> next year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So National Public Works Week proclamation. Uh, since 1960, the American Public Works Association, AD, APWA, has sponsored National Public Works Week. Across North America, more than 30,000 members in the United States and Canada use this week to energize and educate the people on the importance of the contribution of public works to their daily lives. Planning, building, managing, and operating the infrastructure within our local communities. This year's theme, It Starts Here, represents the many facets of modern civilization that grow from the efforts put forth by our public works professionals. From providing clean water, to disposing of solid waste, to building roads and bridges, or planning for and implementing mass transit, to removing snow on roadways, or devising emergency management strategies to, de to meet natural or man-made disasters, our citizens' quality of life starts with public works. Council and staff are asked to recognize our public works staff for their hard work and contributions to the city of Coon Rapids. And the staff would also like to invite the public to an open house on Saturday, May 18th. Uh, the event will occur at the public works facility located at 1831 111th Avenue from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And we're going to talk about that again in just a moment. And what I should have done is I should have skipped right up and read the proclamation, shouldn't I have? Is there any other? I'll just go right to that right now. I almost grabbed the mic and headed out there, but I'm just going to do it from here. All right. Um, Public Works Week. Whereas public works professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, and services that are of vital importance to sustainable and resilient communities and to the health, comfort, high quality of life, and well-being of the people of Coon Rapids, and whereas these infrastructures, facilities, and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public works professionals responsible for building, improving, and maintaining our transportation, <coughs> water supply, water treatment systems, and other public facilities essential for our citizens, and whereas it is in the public interest for the citizens and civic leaders in the city of Coon Rapids to gain knowledge and understanding of the importance of public works and public works programs in their community, and whereas the year 2019 marks the 59th annual National Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association. Now, therefore, I, Jerry Cook, Mayor of the City of Coon Rapids, on behalf of City Council, do hereby proclaim the third full week of May as National Public Works Week in the City of Coon Rapids and urge our people to join with representatives of the American Public Works Association in activities, events, and ceremonies designed to pay tribute to our public works professionals, engineers, managers, and employees, and to recognize the substantial contributions they make to protecting our health, safety, and quality of life, proclaimed the 7th day of May, 2019. Mr. Hammer, how can you, got anything to add to that? No, uh, Sarah Green does a fabulous job in writing these memos and these proclamations. <laughs> and I wish she was here to accept it. <laughs> Along um, with the rest of my staff, Mr. Mayor. And, and all kidding aside, they, they work all hours, all temperatures, all days. Um, and so none of them are here. Um, they all had the invite, but, um, you know, they get up early and they go to bed early. And so um, Mark said he didn't want to attend anyway. So, um, <laughs> But it, it, it's really all about them. Uh, you know, we can say all the pretty things we want and put all this on a piece of paper, but it's, it's the guys and gals down at the shop that uh, do a fabulous job. And, and every day and, and everything you do, and uh, hopefully people understand that. And come on down to the Public Works Open House. You can see the equipment, uh, see the facilities. Uh, learn all about the different things we do, um, see the different projects coming up this year, all the things happening uh, throughout all those different areas that you spoke of related to infrastructure and, and city, city life. The Public Works Open House is something that everybody, every citizen should head to. It's just, it, for every age, for the, from the kids to moms and dads to grandma and grandpas, it's 
it's a it's great to see the equipment we have to, to go i don't even know what that thing does you know it's it's amazing it's very impressive and everybody there is so gracious and welcoming and here this is how you know i told the story a couple years ago my my granddaughter got they said oh no get in that truck that one's got the loud horn you know <laughs> <laughs> but uh no it's it's a great event and i really encourage everybody to get out for it uh, anybody else? Yeah, if we just repeat the hours of the open house again. Uh, sun, or Saturday, May 18th from 10 a.m. to noon. 10 a.m. to noon. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you. And uh, thank you, Mr. Hansen. And thank you to all the public works staff. I know when the snowplow goes by, I don't see either of you driving it. So oh, that's for sure. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank, right. Good thing. Huh? Thank, Thanksgiving, when that water main broke out in front of the house, I didn't see you guys out there either, but I saw city yeah. staff, so. It's all them, I totally admit it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you, you have respond. you do respond to texts <laughs> on weekends, though, so. All right, thank you very much. We are on to item five, approve the minutes of April 16th, 2019. Councilmember Kicker. I make a motion that we approve the minutes of April 16, 2019 council meeting. Second. Motion by Kicker, second by Griscoviak. Is there any corrections or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Uh, next is the approval of the minutes for the local board of an appeal and equalization meeting April 23, 2019. Councilmember Kicker. I make a motion that we approve the minutes of the local board of appeals and equalization meeting of April 23rd, 2019. Second. Motion by Kicker, second by Wells. Any discussion or correction? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? One abstention. That motion carries. One abstention. Um, I guess that would be Commissioner Brad Griscoviak then, or however yeah. you say that because we're approving the... Or is it still a council member, right? I don't know. It's 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 commissioner for the commissioner. that meeting. Yeah. All right. All right. <clears throat> Item seven. We are now on to the consent agenda, and we have four items on our consent agenda this evening. The first one is to adopt resolution 19-46, approving sustainability commission appointment. Annie Hendrick submitted an application for the Sustainability Commission. After discussion with the applicant, the Sustainability Commission recommended Ms. Hendrick's appointment to the commission with a term expiring December 31st, 2021. Um, so with this motion, we will be adopting Resolution 19-46, appointing Annie Hendrick to the Sustainability Commission with a term expiring December 31st, 2021. And then item eight, is to adopt resolution 19-47 approving the historical commission appointment members of the historical commission and city staff would like to appoint a new member to the commission jennifer devries has applied and interviewed for the open seat and the commission feels she is a strong candidate and would be a great addition to the historical commission so we'll be adopting resolution 19-47 appointing jennifer devries to the historical commission and I would like to say both of their resumes were extremely impressive, and I'm glad that isn't the bar everybody has to live up to to get onto one of our commissions. It, uh, they'll be a great additions. Very true. Um, item nine is to accept easements from Lynn Investments Properties, LLC, as part of the Tumblefresh Coin Laundry redevelopment of the former Pizza Hut site Located at 2453 Kunabas Boulevard, construction of a new concrete sidewalk was required. This sidewalk completed an existing gap in the sidewalk system along Kunabas Boulevard. A permanent easement was required to allow for the sidewalk construction and provide for future city maintenance of the sidewalk, as well as provide for storage of snow adjacent to the sidewalk. In addition, city utilities needed to be extended into the site, which included a fire hydrant. A permanent drainage and utility easement was required to accommodate city utilities and provide for future city maintenance of those utilities. So with this, we'll be accepting easements for drainage, utility sidewalk, and snow storage purposes located at 2453 Coon Boulevard. And then item 10 um, is to approve amendments to the Sand Creek Park Concession Stand Agreement 
and I'll just hit a couple of the highlights. The city will provide um, schedules of events each year starting in April 1st, and the contractor will offer concessions on weeknights where youth games are scheduled, weekend tournaments, and special events. If an additional event is scheduled after April 1st, the city will provide the contractor an updated event schedule. And then there's just a couple other little amendments. 15% um, of the organization hosting the event for which the concession stand is operating. In the event the city is the host organization, then such funds shall be deposited in the St. Creek Park Improvement Fund. Um, and 10% of the organization assisting with concessions operations, this may or may not be the organization hosting the event. So we'll be looking to approve the changes to the Sand Creek Concession Stand Agreement between the City of Coon Rapids and the Coon Rapids North Stars Lions Club. And that is the complete consent agenda. Your Honor. Council Member Kicker. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Kicker, second by Geisler. Any discussion or questions? Anything else you wanted to cover that? Uh, all right. Um, all in favor of approving the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the consent agenda is adopted. Um, we're look, looking under bid openings and contract awards to item 11. Consider resolution number 19-11 sub 9, awarding a contract for miscellaneous trail reconstruction. This is uh, Nelson Park trail reconstruction, basketball court <coughs> replacement, pedestrian curb ramp installation. Uh, trackside Park, trail reconstruction, basketball court replacement, pedestrian curb ramp installations, and uh, Wedgwood Trail, trail reconstruction, culvert replacement, pedestrian curb ramp installations. Uh, the advertisement for bids was published on March 22nd, and the bids were received April 20, or April 12th. We had six, six bids. The engineer's estimate for the project was $282,115. And the low bidder, Northwest Asphalt Incorporated, has successfully completed numerous projects throughout the city. Pending award of the contract, the work will be scheduled to take place between June and August of 2019. Um, and the funding for this will be split between the Park Improvement Fund uh, for Nelson and Trackside Parks and the Park, Re Park Referendum for Wedgwood Trail. Anybody have any questions? Mr. Hanson, Mr. Hammer, anything else you want to cover there? Councilmember Geisler. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 19 11 sub 9, awarding a contract to Northwest Asphalt Incorporated in the amount of $240,579.25 for miscellaneous trail reconstruction. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Kicker. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And that will that's part of that is going to be actually removing just that little corner of that trail in Wedgwood, right? That's sort of that extra doesn't really do anything there except confuse people. Okay. All right. Uh, we are on to item 12. Um, consider resolutions 19-1 sub 9 and 19-1 sub 12 awarding contracts and adopting assessments for street reconstruction projects. Uh, project 19-1, I'm sorry. Um, would you want me to just read this or do you wanna, somebody wanna cover it? It's up, it's up to you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I can, Mr. Uh, I can try to cover it the best I can. There's a lot of info in, in the memo, but uh, essentially uh, we're asking for award of a contract to North Valley uh, they've done a lot of street reconstruction pro projects for us every year. They've always done a very good job. Um, our engineer's estimate on the project was approximately $3.2 million. Uh, the lowest bid, uh, we had three bidders on the project. The lowest bid came in at about $3.54 million. So it was a bit over our engineer's estimate. We uh, attribute that to a couple of different things. Uh, the rise in concrete prices. Uh, across the board. Uh, also, there's a lot of work out there right now. Um, so typically, we have a lot more bidders on these types of projects. Um, but in this case, we only had three. So 
It was just a lot of work uh, uh, and, and not many people to do it all, so, so that's uh, also driving up the prices. We talked to a few other cities that are seeing similar uh, results uh, as we are. Um, we have a uh, open house scheduled for May 14th. Uh, this one is going to take place in Crooked Lake Park. Um, it's a, a, a meeting that anybody can come to between 4.30 and 6.30. We'll have representatives from the contractor as well as city staff there. Uh, we can answer questions. We'll have copies of the schedule there. So a lot of people at this point have a lot of questions on when their street's going to be redone. We'll have copies of the schedule. They're in the process of uh, being developed right now, but we'll have them there next Tuesday. Uh, for this meeting, we'll be able to answer questions. Also, if people have uh, questions about redoing uh, their driveways or other things and talking to the contractor directly about that, they'll have that opportunity as well. So, Mr. Hanson, this is the streets are 132nd Lane from Crooked Lake Boulevard to Bittersweet and Yukon to, cul to the cul-de-sac. 132nd Avenue from Yukon Street to Coon Creek Boulevard. 131st Lane from Crocus Street to Bittersweet. Crocus Street from 132nd Lane to 131st. Now I'm recognizing I shouldn't have started. Um, <laughs> Bittersweet Street from 132nd Lane to 131st Avenue. Zion Street from 132nd Lane to 131st Avenue. Yukon Street from 132nd Lane to 131st Avenue. And 131st Avenue to Coon Creek Boulevard. Xavis Street from 131st to the cul-de-sac. 131st Avenue from Crooked Lake Boulevard to Coon Creek Boulevard. Arrowhead Street from 131st Avenue to the cul-de-sac, 130th Circle, 130th Lane, and 129th Lane from Yukon Street to the cul-de-sac, 127th Avenue from Hanson Boulevard to Crane Street, Crane Street from 127th Avenue to Main Street, Partridge Street from cul-de-sac south of Main Street to 121st Lane, 124th Avenue from Raven Street to Partridge Street, 123rd Lane from Thrush Street to Quinn Street and Partridge Street to Shenandoah Boulevard and Raven Street from 124th <coughs> Avenue to 123rd Lane. And the reason I wanted to read those is that I just really want to encourage folks that are under, that are, that are um, going under this construction to attend that neighborhood meeting because it's so important to meet the contractor, to get that information, to know that you're getting the updates, when the water's gonna be off, when, you, you know, when you're gonna have access to your driveway, when you're not, um, and it's just really important to get the communication started. And like you said, if you have questions about you know, extending the patch on the driveway or the curbs or whatever it is, it's just a great time to get that done. Right, and if people aren't able to make it, we'll certainly be sending all of this information in the U.S. mail within the next week or so, the schedule, as well as all of the contact information and a list of frequently asked questions. Excellent. All right, council, council member Kicker. I make a, a motion uh, that the council, do, do I do, can I do just one at a time here, A and B, or just do them both? Okay. Uh, the, the council will adopt resolution number 19-1 sub 9 awarding, uh, awarding a contract to North Valley Inc. Uh, in the amount of $3,544,537.27 and adopt resolution number 19-1 sub 12 adopting the assessments for project 19-1. Second. Motion by Kicker and a second by Geisler. Other discussion? Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Geisler. Um, one other thing that as we're going to be doing a number of different street reconstructions, it's kind of road construction time in the city. Um, in addition to the neighborhood meetings, you can get information on the websites and you can sign up for emails and you can get weekly emails that will tell you what's going on. So you don't always have to go look, it just comes in your email box. So I encourage you to um, investigate and look at all of the different ways there are to keep yourself informed of all of this work so we don't have surprises. Very good. Any other discussion? Your Honor. Council Member Griscoviak. A question for Mr. Hansen. Uh, you mentioned part of our overage or over our estimate is the rising cost of labor and materials. You specifically mentioned concrete. I know that we're going to be getting brand new sidewalks on the north side of 131st and on the north side of 127th. I'm noticing that your specification is six foot wide concrete sidewalk. My question is, 
is a six foot wide concrete sidewalk, is that our city standard right now? That seems a little wider than some of the other sidewalks that we have in town, so. I, Mr. I'll, I'll start, Mr. Hammer? I'll, I'll start, Tim. And So we went to a six foot wide sidewalk starting this year. Mm. Um, it gives our, 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 our maintenance plowing operations a little bit more buffer on the edges um, to, to work with as they're plowing it. Uh, so we're finding that's it's based on feedback that we got from our maintenance people that are plowing it every winter to go to just a little bit, give us our, give ourselves a few more extra inches on each side, uh, so that we're not scalping people's sod and and things like that in in certain periods of the year. Um, so that that was kind of the basis for it, but that is our standard now. If it's a five foot sidewalk today and we're just replacing a, a short segment of it, we still go to the five foot. It's when we're doing holistic long segments that we go to six foot. Okay. Then they're going to complain we're not plowing full width. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think it'll reduce other complaints. Okay. Um, when, when your sidewalk machine is four foot nine and your sidewalk is five feet, there's always the irrigation heads. The, mm -hmm. yep. I think for the complaints I get for not plowing six inches on either side, I'll probably tenfold reduction in the come fix my grass and the labor and the time that it takes to do that. Okay, thanks for the explanation, that makes sense. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. We are on to item 13. Uh, consider resolution 19-2 sub 12 adopting assessments for um, MSA street reconstruction project 19-2 Two. Um, this is a little bit different project, isn't it, Mr. Hansen? And it's only three streets, but it's a bigger project. That's correct. This is our <laughs> this is our uh, yearly uh, municipal state aid project. So we have about 40 streets in Coon Rap, or 40 miles of streets, excuse me, uh, of streets in Coon Rapids that are considered municipal state aid. They're they're higher volume collector type streets that are wider. Uh, and they're, they're typically thicker sections of asphalt. Um, so we get assistance from the state of Minnesota to, to reconstruct these streets. And the, the streets that we're planning this year are Wedgwood Drive from Main Street to Round Lake Boulevard, Olive Street from Main Street to 121st Avenue. That's also gonna have the water main replaced. And then Foley Boulevard from 124th Lane South to 115th Avenue. And then in conjunction with that, we're shifting the curb on the east side to accommodate a new 10-foot wide asphalt trail on the east side of Foley. That will essentially stretch from, from Northdale all the way to, to Main Street. Um, we've got a few other items going on with these projects that include replacing the, the large diameter culverts for Sand Creek below Foley Boulevard. We're also... Um, uh, adding a rectangular rapid flashing beacon that pedestrians will be able to actuate or turn on when they're ready to cross the trail at, at Goldenrod Street. And, and it'll have advanced warning flashers to alert drivers that somebody's about to cross into the, the, the crosswalk there. Um, tightening up some of the lane striping there and then adding bump outs at that same location at Goldenrod or, or curb curb bump outs that kind of project into the shoulder and just help calm traffic. That's the idea. And then also doing that on 123rd Avenue where we have a, a school crosswalk heading to, to Sand Creek. So um, uh, this, this project's out for bid right now. We're, we're planning to open bids, I believe, on May 16th. And then we'll come to the, the next council meeting and ask for an award of that project. It took a, it's, it's taken us a little bit longer to get through some of the approval process with the state and some of the other permits that we've had to, so this one's just a little bit behind, but uh, otherwise we'd be awarding this one tonight as well. So Mr. Hanson, once we have the contractor on this one, will we be having a neighborhood meeting on this one as well then? Yes, yes indeed. Well, that, that one right now is planned for May 29th. Postcards will go out very soon, alerting the residents, so we'll do the same process. This one will also be in Woodview Park. It's about the closest park to Foley Boulevard in, in the general project area that we could find that has a parking lot and a shelter in case it rains. 
All right. Your Honor. Good. Council Member Kicker. Uh, I make a motion that uh, the council adopt resolution number 19-2 sub 12, adopting the assessments for project 19-2. Second. Motion by Kicker, second by Wells. Discussion? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Gruskowiak. I just had a question. Uh, it's relating to 13 and 15. We haven't awarded these contracts yet. The bids are still out, but we note in our public memo what the what our engineer's estimate is. I'm just wondering, do we have to do that or can we keep that private until all of our bids are in? You see what I'm saying? I, I think if it was only one bidder that might be impa might impact it, but if with multiple bidders, I don't know, does it matter or I don't know. Council member, so we have members of the council, that's something we just typically don't provide as an engineer's estimate. And so um, it was inadvertently placed in the memo. Oh. Take it that. Stuck, it stuck out. <laughs> all right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. You're in item 14. Consider resolutions 19 3 sub 9 and 19 3 sub 12, awarding the contract and adopting assessments for reconstruction. Street Reconstruction Project 19-3. Um, another 19 streets here, Mr. Hansen. Perhaps the best way to describe uh, this project are, are streets that are generally east of Foley Boulevard from Northdale Boulevard up to 117th. So that includes Flintwood Street um, and then the entire Bridgewater neighborhood uh, to the east of that. And then uh, we're also planning to reconstruct Mississippi Boulevard from Hanson Boulevard to Ibis Street, as well as Flora Street, north of 109th Lane, adjacent to the Coon Rapids Ice Center. Uh, Springbrook Drive from south of Holly Street to approximately um, uh, south of the YMCA. And then um, uh, East River Road Frontage Road or Service Road from 84th Lane to Larch Street is included with this project. And then Holly Street from 93rd Avenue to Springbrook Drive is also included. Okay. Open house meetings were held during evening hours on the November 27th and January 29th. Um, this is, oh, this is one. The neighborhood meeting for this one to introduce city and contractor project staff will be held in Woodview Park on May 15th. That's correct, yep. So uh, similar to the other project that we talked about, Project 19-1, this one, 19-3, will have a open house meeting on May 15th from 4.30 to 6.30 in Woodview Park. Uh, the contractor will be there. Uh, the contractor, the low bidder for this one was Douglas Kerr Underground. And we, we have done work with Douglas Kerr uh, in Coon Rapids, but it's been a while. So we did call around to some of our neighboring cities. We, we got references and, and they all had pretty good things to say about them. Um, so they, they, they appear like they're, they're prepared to do a very good job for us. Um, again, with this particular project, our engineer's estimate was 4.1 million. The low bidder, uh, in this case, Douglas Kerr was at 4.7 million. Again, for very similar reasons to the other project, um, uh, the, this project came in a, a bit higher than what we had expected uh, in, in the estimating process. Um, and and if, if the contract is awarded tonight, again, we, we plan to send out letters in the mail uh, indicating contact information, schedule information. Of course, the schedules will also be available at the park meeting next week on Wednesday and then also frequently asked questions will come in the mail as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Mayor? Council Member Geisler. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 19-3 sub 9, awarding a contract to Douglas Kerr Underground LLC in the amount of $4,703,654.90. And to adopt resolution 19-3 sub 12, adopting the assessments for the project 19-3. Motion by Geisler, second by Wells. I'm still trying to get past that raving, that raving recommendation. Oh, pretty good. 
<laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And we are on item 15. Consider resolution 19-4 uh, sub 12, adopting assessments for street reconstruction project 19-4. And this is probably the, the smallest project we've got here. And it's really not even our project, huh? Mr. Hanson? That's correct, Mr. Mayor and, and uh, council members. This is a city of Anoka-led street reconstruction project. It's part of a much larger Anoka project. Um, they took the lead on reconstructing a border street or 121st Avenue or what they would call South Street. Um, all of the utilities are going to be replaced as part of this project um, and as well as the street and, and, and other infrastructure. We're splitting the costs equally for the street pavement and for the storm sewer elements. The sanitary sewers and the water mains most of the residents, all of the residents on the Coon Rapids side at this point are served by Anoka sewer <coughs> and water, so they pay their bills to Anoka. So there's no costs, uh, at least to the city, for, for most of that work. Um, however, we are adding a new segment of water main as part of this from Cree Street to the very west city limit as it kind of jogs around in that part of the city. Um, we're making a, th a, a small connection that's going to improve water circulation and pressures in our system there. Um, and then as we do that, we're going to transfer the three properties on that side of Coon Rapids to Coon Rapids Water. And so we're adjusting the assessments to accommodate that. And, um, but uh, essentially, the project is actually already underway in certain parts of Anoka. And Anoka has been communicating with residents. They set, set, sent letters to our side of the street and, and those residents informing them of who to contact. The contractor on this project is Keekly Underground. And uh, if there's any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right. Eric? Councilor Amber I do have a question since it's a joint project with Anoka. The, uh, the Coon Rapids residents are being assessed by Coon Rapids. They don't also get assessed by Anoka, do they? No. Okay. Uh, no city can assess somebody in a different okay. city yeah. by okay. law. So I figured yeah. I wanted to confirm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Your Honor. Council Member Kicker. Uh, I make a motion that the Council adopt resolution number 19-4, sub-12, adopting the assessments for project 19-4. Second. Motion by Kicker, second by Geisler. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And we are on to item 16. In planning case 19-8, consider approval of a preliminary plat and resolution 19-48, granting final plat Riverdale Corners, third edition, 3021, 124th Avenue, Metro Storage, uh, Mr. Harlicker isn't here this evening. Um, do you want me to read the discussion points, Mr. Fidelius, or do you uh, want to? If you, you want, Mr. Mayor, I have a very brief presentation if you'd like me to. Oh, let's do it. Here. You want to go Why through not? it? All right. Okay, I'll do my best. Hate for Jerry Teeson to come all the way out to the meeting and then not, you know, put him in the show somehow. <laughs> okay, well, let's give this a try. The folks, the great white gopher hunter. There we go. <laughs> All right. Well, Mr. Mayor and Council, um, <clears throat> this is a preliminary and final plat for uh, Metro Storage, uh, which is proposing to uh, build a self storage facility uh, on at uh, 3021 124th Avenue. This is an aerial photo that shows the location. So, just for folks in terms of reference, the top side of the screen is Main Street. We have 124th Avenue. It's kind of an odd shaped parcel. Uh, the applicant wants to plat the parcel into two developable sites. Uh, right now it's a total of five parcels with uh, 6.38 acres. This is uh, the preliminary plat which was presented to the Planning Commission back at their April meeting. Um, and what you see here are basically uh, two, two parcels, uh, lot one, block one, and lot two, uh, 
black one, uh, and then a couple of outlots. When this item was presented to the Planning Commission, there were some concerns that staff had with regard to uh, these outlots. Uh, in, in our experience, there can be issues uh, if these parcels are kind of left as outlots that eventually uh, they can become tax forfeit. And so one of the conditions of approval or one of the things that we had recommended to the Planning Commission was that these outlots be combined with uh, lot two. So the final plat, which uh, is shown here and was um, prepared, I guess, after the, the Planning Commission meeting now shows those two parcels. Uh, so lot one is the parcel where the self-storage facility will be located. Lot two now contains uh, the remainder of the parcel as well as those, those two outlots, which are described as parcels 2A and 2B. And just kind of a quick side note, um, those are, there's an issue with the underlying title as it relates to Torrens and abstract property. So that's why these are, these are still part of lot two, but there's a, a, this designation related to 2A and 2B. Uh, this also provides um, uh, or depicts all of the various uh, drainage and utility easements that would be required under our code. The developable parcel is 2.73 acres, and then the remainder of the site is 3.73 acres. Real briefly, in terms of the site plan, uh, this is what was presented to the Planning Commission along with a conditional use permit. Uh, it's 138 thousand square foot uh, three-story indoor self-storage facility. Uh, this application was approved with conditions by the by the Planning Commission that that evening. This is a copy of the grading plan. Uh, the, I guess the couple things I wanted to point out with respect to that is drainage. That was a topic that uh, typically comes up whenever we plat a property. So there's a large infiltration basin that um, is designed to accommodate um, a lot of the capacity that is needed for both parcels. Each site will also have to have separate stormwater treatment, and that's what's shown on this uh, portion of the grading plan. So for the proposed self-storage facility, there's some additional um, drainage inf infiltration on the south end of the site. When the other parcel is developed, uh, that party will have to uh, also provide additional stormwater treatment at that point in time. This is a copy of the landscape plan, which uh, shows uh, the various plantings, which includes overstory trees, shrubs, some ornamental trees. It meets all of our landscaping standards, so there are no issues there. Uh, and finally, this is a copy of the elevation, uh, showing the mix of materials. I will say that this design, when we originally um, uh, were presented with it, included a bank of garage doors on both sides of the building and through that discussion process that we have at the staff level before this even got to the Planning Commission that uh, uh, that particular aspect or element of this plan changed. So I think we're, um, again, while the discussion tonight doesn't really relate to the site plan, I just want you to know that I think this design uh, has really evolved from when we originally presented it. And just as a reminder for the council and folks who may be watching at home, this application was presented prior to the um, March 9th uh, development moratorium as it relates to self-storage facilities. So it made it under, under the wire and, and therefore was uh, considered by the Planning Commission. And then lastly, this is uh, a rendering of what the, what the building looks like. So the Planning Commission did approve the site plan and conditional use permit as I mentioned. They also held a uh, public hearing as it related to the preliminary and final plat and recommended approval by the council, so the action this evening would then be to approve the preliminary plat and also resolution 1948, which would grant final plat approval along with, uh, I think there's four stated conditions that would be a part of that uh, approval this evening. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Cornelius, is this, so is this the, um, where the cars parked, is that the north, is that facing Main Street? Is that uh, let me look at the site plan here. That's where the parking was. That's yeah, where the, the parking The is parking right will be front. on the north end of the site. Okay. Yep. That's correct. Mr. Rick. Councilor Geisler? Good, 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 good. Geisler? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just had a question. You know, if you look at the final plat with where the drainage and utility easement is on that second parcel. Do, do. 
Let's see. Well, there we go. There. Mm -hmm. um, the, that drainage utility easement, is there any reason, is it because of the grading that you can't move it more towards the north? Because I would think that having that drainage easement that far into that second parcel would affect its viability as a buildable? You know, that's a good question. Uh, I don't, Mark, Mark Hansen might be able to address that. Because that's over a pipe that's going from lot one all the way over to the infiltration basin shown in lot 2A. I, I understand, and I'm just wondering, so that easement, though, they can't really build on the easement, right? That would be correct, right. yeah. And so the question is, why are we putting the pipe that far in from what would be, I don't know if that's north on the top, let's pretend north is on the top, mm -hmm. um, that northern lot line because that means I've got a lot less buildable space on that second. It, it, it's something the applicant could consider as part of their design. So, and to me that was just a little odd of, and it could be of how it needs to be graded with the, because I know that it's kind of lower than Main Street in that space. Yeah, it, it, it would have to be reviewed to make sure that, that it could work from a, 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 a hydraulic standpoint. Um, that pipe is also serving as the overflow pipe. So as the infiltration, if it ever built up a certain, it's going to reverse and the water, it's flat enough that the water would flow back okay. and then into the system onto Main Street. So it, 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 it's probably also a function of just ma being able to make it work hydraulically as okay. well. You can't build a building over the top of it. You could put a parking lot or something else over the top of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't designing something that reduces the utility of that second parcel. Thank you. Anything else, sir? I don't have anything further, Mr. Mayor. Right. Anybody else have any questions for Mr. Mayor? Yes. I know this is a preliminary plat, but. The landscaping, I thought when I heard the uh, Planning Commission talk about, there was going to be some screening would be like on the west side of the second lot against those houses. Is, is that shown here or is that going to be in a... That's a, the site plan. Site which, plan coming? Which is, we don't see that. Anymore. Yeah, the site, the site, the site plan was approved was. That, that evening by the Planning Commission. And I did review the tape before tonight's <laughs> meeting. And I thought it was over in this area yep. that they were talking about That's additional it. okay screening, but That's the way I saw it too. Okay, and thank just you. to clarify, um, council members, um, that it's both the preliminary and final plat tonight. Yep. No. So this is this would be it in terms of action. Okay. Mr. Mayor. I'll make a, a motion on planning gate case nineteen dash ten to approve the preliminary plat and approve resolution nineteen dash forty eight granting final plat approval for Riverdale Corners third edition with the four stated conditions. Condition one, compliance with Title 11, City Code of Coon Rapids. Item two, park dedication, the amount of $5,000 per acre is due prior to releasing the plat for recording. Item three, all comments of the city engineer must be addressed. And item four, all comments of Anoka County and MnDOT must be addressed. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Kicker. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. <laughs> all right, we are up to item 17. Thank you, Mr. Fernelius. Thank you all. Uh, consider adoption of the fair housing policy. Um, I'm not sure where to do the shortcut on the discussion here. So, you, Mr. Fernelius, you want to? summarize this item. So uh, this is um, a topic that we had discussed back in April at a work session, as you recall. So last year, the Met Council um, adopted a new requirement for cities that want to participate in the Livable Communities Program uh, that cities that want to take advantage of those funds need to adopt a fair housing policy. Uh, and that program 
provides resources for um, a variety of projects, things like the transit-oriented development, uh, the project that we did up at the Riverdale TOD site, brownfield cleanup, environmental investigations, other kinds of housing activities, uh, which relates to a, uh, another item that is on our agenda this evening. Uh, and late last year, um, the City and Common Bond Communities, which is a nonprofit housing developer owner, applied for funding through this program, and we discovered as a result of that that we were subject to this policy. So that's kind of what is triggering adoption of it this evening, although in general I think the policy itself makes sense. Uh, for the most part, it... it um, affirms a lot of the things that are, that are a part of the Federal Fair Housing Act, um, things that would include um, information that we would want to provide to residents who have questions about fair housing or housing discrimination complaints, those kinds of things, efforts that we make to um, provide uh, translation services if English is not the primary language of the residents that, that um, are contacting us. Uh, that will also do periodic reviews of our codes to make sure that um, we're not creating disparate impacts or other, other kinds of things that might be unintended consequences of violating the Federal Fair Housing Act. So I think in, in general it's a good policy. It makes sense for us to consider it. It is a policy, so it, we do have flexibility that as circumstances change, we can, we can flex the policy. What we have modeled this policy after is what several cities, including Bloomington, Edina, and Roseville, have done. Um, so it's a, it's a model that has been accepted by the Met Council uh, and we think would make sense in our particular circumstances. So the policy that you have this evening, um, if it were adopted, it would be what, what we would then have in place. It would satisfy our Met Council requirements. Um, if there are things we want to change about it or, or questions or comments that the council has this evening, certainly we can, ad we can address those tonight too. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, so Mr. Fernelius, I just had those, those three things that I emailed to you earlier today. Um, you, you answered the question about the translation services. I was curious if that obligated us to hire a translator or something. Um, and then you were gonna add the word that to that item 4E the sentence structure was a little awkward. Yep. I figured the word that was missing. Um, and then item 4F, um, I was just hoping we could add that word consider in there. Um, um, instead of the city will integrate the recommendations and action plan into city planning documents, it just seems like it would be nice to have something that would allow um, discernment to future staff and councils rather than saying they will integrate, you know, whatever the new dictates are, you know, so yeah. I just thought that wouldn't change whether they accept it or not, right? No, I, I, I don't think it would. I think it would just, you know, clarify that we'll consider those, uh, those issues as, as opposed to you know, I guess an outright commitment to making those changes, not knowing what they are. Well, well so. it, that was exactly it, because it was the, uh, um, oh, I put my page over there. Um, be, yeah, because it isn't just uh, agreeing to uh, adopt what they're giving us today, it's agreeing to integrate whatever comes from the Regional Fair Housing Implementation Council, you know, as it comes up, and I, it's probably all going to be reasonable, but it would be nice to be able to at least consider each thing before we implement them. So. And Mr. Mayor, just to clarify uh, in the correspondence that you and I had earlier today, uh, so Coon Rapids was a part of the Fair Housing Implementation Council, but then when we turned over our block grant funds, we were no longer an entitlement uh, community. We then f fall under the Anoka County's participation in that program. So. You know, to some extent, I don't know how much of this language directly uh, affects us, but certainly I think it's something that we'll want to consider and, and, and evaluate, and I think the suggestion makes, makes sense. All right. Anybody have any questions or thoughts about it? Council Member Kicker? I just wanted, uh, uh, Mr. Fernelius, if you could uh, uh, talk a little bit about the regional analysis of the impediments. Just give a, 
is that something we've participated in? We've already we've already been participating in. Uh, yes, so Councilmember Kickers. From what I understand, so I want to say this was early 2000s. There was a lawsuit involving a number of different um, entities, I believe, Met Council, Minneapolis, St. Paul, a number of other agencies were involved in this lawsuit that there had been a historic pattern of housing discrimination in the, in the um, Twin Cities region. Uh, and so the Fair Housing Implementation Council was created. Um, it also included all of the um, federal entitlement communities, which included Coon Rapids agreed to participate in that. So one of the outcomes of that was this council was created to look at regional impediments. So those would be everything from zoning ordinances to housing codes to other kinds of policies that cities may have created over the years that created unintentional housing discrimination. So that's what the council, uh, the purpose of it is. It still meets, um, although we are not an active member of it at this point in time so okay thanks um, so before we before someone makes a motion is everybody okay with those few small changes that we talked about so Mr. Mayor, I, I have Personal two of here. them that I caught and I thought that there were three so one is in 4e where we're changing that sentence the end of it where it says and land use changes we're inserting the word that may be expedited by the city and then the, the right spot and then in 4f um, the last sentence the city will consider we're adding that word consider um, uh, to integrate maybe consider to integrate and I didn't catch what the third one was um, well the, the third one is actually more a question about oh, just the, the, question. the translation okay okay, it's okay. A, yeah. So with that, I will go forward and make a motion. Okay. Um, I will make a motion that we adopt the fair housing policy with the two stated um, edits. Do I need to state them again? Okay. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Kicker. Is there a discussion? Mayor. I appreciate the time that we spent in work session on this. Uh, I think that we have a pretty straightforward document. It's two pages. It's modeled after what other cities have done. So I think we've uh, accomplished exactly what we set forth in the policy. I'm happy with it. Very good. No discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion is carried. Um, item 18. Consider resolution 19-49, amending the facility construction fund budget. Mr. Stem, Stemwettel. Mayor and Council, the uh, sort of genesis of this item uh, began in the uh, council retreat in February where council staff had a discussion about any interest in exploring uh, potential future additions at the Coon Rapids Ice Center site. And so the purpose of this budget amendment is to allow staff to engage an architect consultant to begin developing those options and because it wasn't anticipated originally in the 2019 budget and so uh, if this were approved tonight what we would do we've been interviewing some firms uh, we'd finalize that with our, our finalist and begin uh, a process to explore those um, initial options there would be uh, some some public outreach to the extent that certainly we'd want to work with um, the potential user groups and folks like that um, and then really to identify you know two three four uh, options recreational community gathering space things of that nature that we could have a uh, more thorough discussion with the council and the timeline we're looking at is sometime in the early fall September October to present those options to council um, again sort of contingent on this being approved uh, staff is prepared to provide an update to the City Council at their work session next week on Tuesday just to um, one sort of introduce the, the project scope um, get some early feedback on things that staff might want to consider um, things of that nature and so we can outline that a little bit more this just really gives us the budgetary green light to engage with that consultant Mr. Councilmember Wells um, believe me I'm, I'm happy that we're only spending $25,000 but I guess I'm concerned what are we going to get for 20 are we going to get 
several options and lots of designs and plans. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot of money nowadays to get, you know, the mm -hmm. kind of information we probably need. Mayor and Council, yes. Uh, I think really what it will get you is uh, that range of options I had mentioned, kind of in that two to four range, and uh, the, some real construction estimates on what each of those options would entail and uh, some of those other components that I mentioned about the public process, touching base with the city council and, and so forth. From an architectural standpoint, probably where, from a consultant standpoint, really where they're spending their money is the hours working with staff, user groups, the public, things like that, you know, time spent in meeting space. In terms of developing really high level options, I know in some, I was really impressed with some of the meetings we had because on the fly, they could really create some boxes for us on the map, how it would look, um, some examples. So that part of it's very computerized and sophisticated. It's really just telling them where and then some of the work then beyond that, well, what's going to be inside the box uh, and how that breaks down from a construction standpoint is where we'll be spending some more of our time. So uh, we had three proposals that we uh, received. Um, all of them would fit comfortably really within this $25,000 that's been proposed. I think you answered this, but that was uh, one of my concerns. We're going to spend the $25,000 to get some, some ideas and some architectural. Uh, the architects will be reaching out to those main user groups to get their feedback before they come back with the options that, that we'll ultimately look at. Yeah, Mayor Council, I would say that really the, the public process is up, up to us. I mean, they will help, they'll facilitate, um, but we can do really kind of as much as or as little as we want in terms of how much data, how much feedback we're gathering. Um, so I think that's something we should certainly talk about in, in a work session um, next week. Um, you know, but essentially they'll provide us the materials, you know, but they'll wait to kind of get some of that end result of, okay, we've got a lot of information, but how does this break down in terms of the options you want us to develop? And then that's really, once they develop those options, they'll present that out to council and that's where it ends. So going back a step a little bit, the $25,000 you know, it doesn't get us construction plans. It doesn't get us anything of that nature. Really, all it does is develop those ideas, uh, you know, do a really thorough job of how we arrive at that. Then if, and really if the council decides to move forward on any particular project, then we're into a whole other process at that point um, in, ter in terms of developing it. And so this really just will cover um, working with staff, the public, um, you know, their time to develop those options. Um, the kind of the, what we've decided is it'd be better to bring in a construction manager to work with the architect um, to help develop the construction costs. It's something a couple of them told us was actually their preferred method and we think it's a good one to kind of um, make sure that the architect's estimates are in line with construction reality, things of that nature. So um, pretty comfortable with what this 25,000 will cover, um, but certainly if there were future uh, projects that the council want to pursue, there will be a lot more discussion before we get to that point. Yeah. I know this is not the time to totally discuss it, but, but it's such a moving target. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's an article in the paper about the South Metro. They don't need field house. They need basketball courts. Mm -hmm. And the National Sports Center is in the process of a huge field house expansion. So, I mean, it, what's going to be needed, you know, even now might not be the same in even two, three years from now. Sure. So it's, it is kind of a guessing game. Yes. I agree. Councilor yeah. um, My question to the staff when this came out was, okay, you know, I, before we would hire a consultant to go out and do that, I want to make sure that, that from a council that we've got some idea of what truly is their charter, what is their scope, what are we asking them to do? Um, and so that's what I think at our work session next week that we'll make sure that we're on the page so what we get back is valuable and can be used for us to make solid decisions of what is the right thing to do, is it something that uh, the city needs and can afford, and what is, you know, are there multiple phases and how do we go forward with that. So getting us all together next week I think will be good. 
somebody want to spend that money now? <laughs> council Member Kicker? <laughs> Make a motion that the council uh, adopt resolution number 19-49, amending the 2019 facilities construction fund. Second. Motion by Kicker, second by Geisler. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And we are on to item 19. Consider resolution 19-50, authorizing acceptance of livable communities grant and agreement with the Met Council. And this was hanging over that fair, under that fair housing document, correct? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Fernelius, any highlights here? This is, we've already kind of talked about this a few times, right? This is the Galway place. Mayor Council, yes, we have previously discussed this. Um, so Common Bond Communities did apply for an allocation of, of uh, funds under the livable communities local housing incentive account, I think is the, the program. It's $200,000, which they plan to invest into the rehab of the Galway Place townhomes. This is a 36 unit uh, rental townhome development that was built in the early 80s. Um, Common Bond took it over, I want to say, two years ago um, and has a fairly, um, I think, impressive plan to rehab the building. So these dollars would be used for part of the rehab. We also previously allocated some of our community development block grant funds for this. So, so the city, I think, is contributing towards this. The Met Council is contributing towards it. So I think it'll be a good, a good project. Uh, so the resolution this evening would accept the funds and then um, authorize execution of the grant agreement. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 19-50, accepting the $200,000 of liberal livable communities grant funds from the Metropolitan Council and authorize the execution of the grant agreement. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Griscoviak. Is there further to, uh, further discussion? Didn't he get that in? Is yeah, that you? Did. Yeah. Well, oh, I thought did. so. All right. Sure. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. We are at the open mic public comment portion. Anybody here for open mic this evening? Yes, sir. So if you could please step up to the podium there. Open mic provides an opportunity for the public to address the city council on subjects that are not part of the regular meeting agenda. The public is invited to express any concerns they may have which are relevant to the affairs, policies, or practices of the city of Coon Rapids. Remarks will be limited to three minutes. So please give us your name and address. And My name's Bernard Schatz. I live at 11817 Rain Street. And like everybody else in here, everybody has a birthday once a year, right? I got a letter from the city of Coon Rapids on my birthday in regards to increasing my water, basic water fee by $16. So I take this form and I go down to the water department First thing they ask me is, can I see your driver's license? They give me the driver's license, says, well, too bad. You should have been born a year earlier, then you wouldn't have to pay this fee. Now, if you look up in the dictionary, discrimination, I think this would qualify. This is a discrimination thing toward me because I was born a year too late. And I feel that's very unfair, very unfair. Now, hopefully we can settle this. And I talked to an assistant city attorney. He told me, go to the VA and get help. Well, I'm not going to go running around and run around with this problem. We can settle this right here with the city of Coon Rapids. And I expect to have this waived because this is total discrimination, people. Total. And I'm serious about this because there's other ways to pursue this. There's Channel 5. There's other ways. And I don't want to do that any further than I have to. But I feel very, very upset about this. I've been in the Coon Rapids since 1962, paid my taxes every year, participated in city operations and fund operation ID, this and this, volunteered for a lot of things, but hopefully I can get an answer. If it's not tonight, in writing, sooner or later. Because uh, I really want an answer. I'm very sorry, I never get upset, I'm a good citizen. I know a lot of you people have been around for years and years and years, and uh, it's um, kind of a poor way to celebrate my birthday. That's unfortunate timing. 
for sure. Yes. And I thank you, Council, for your time and efforts. Hopefully we can get an answer. Thank you. If it's tonight, I'm happy with it. If not, we'll pursue it later. Yeah. It, it won't be tonight. You will get a letter from, from staff on it. But uh, Has the staff got any comments at this point in time? It would, yeah. it would only be if, there's a, if you need a clarifying question, right? Mr. Stemmuddle? Mayor Council, I think at this point, you know, if I can get your contact information, we can follow up with you directly. I'll, I'll need a little more background on the particular situation before, and then we can um, kind of formalize what that response is. I came back about a month ago to the Water Department and says, I'd like to have a copy of what I signed and gave to you. They says, well, we'll look it up. They went to the file, looked it up. We don't have it. We threw it away. You threw this piece of paper away? He says, yes, we threw it away. That really upset me. Since you gave me a blank copy, it's not signed, the form that they sent to me. I have that in my file. Okay. So you just make sure they have your contact information. They'll make sure that you Who do I, uh, you. what's your name? Sir, uh, yep, my name is Matt Stemwittle, and I can, if, after I can the grab meeting. your uh, phone number or something here in just a After minute. the meeting. Yep. Thank you, Councilman. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else here for open mic this evening? All right. We are on to, we don't have any reports on previous open mics. And we are on to other business. Um, I would love to hear how it's going out at the uh, Bunker Hills Golf Course. Are the, are the golfers out? Is the, are the greens looking good? What's going on, Mr. Anderson? Mayor Council, there's a lot going on at the golf course. It's, it's always exciting this time of year. Um, um, we have patio season. You know, it's officially patio season. I'm saying that because <laughs> tomorrow may feel more like fireplace season or <laughs> fire pit season, right? But the good news is we have areas that have those things as well. So the the entire facility is open and it's, it's bustling and a lot of events going on every day. High school, we had two high school matches today and nine leagues playing and just a lot of fun. It's going to be a really exciting weekend as well. Saturday we have a demo day where six or seven of the top golf equipment companies will have all of their equipment and golf clubs on the driving range for folks to come. It's complimentary for folks to come and try clubs, certainly can purchase them um, if they like them, if they hit them well. And then on Sunday, it's Mother's Day. So uh, folks can uh, still make reservations for Mother's Day brunch at kendallstc.com or by calling the golf course um, phone number. So uh, it's going to be a great weekend. I think the weather's going to be good this weekend. We'll see. We'll get through tomorrow and Thursday with a little bit of rain or a lot of rain. Um, but I always offer folks a, a place to come in from the cold as well. So. I was, I was looking at some of the golf courses had some of that uh, that winter freeze, that winter kill, were, were we, did we miss that or? Did no, we? nobody did. Nobody no. did. And that's, that's a poana grass is called. It's a, it's an annual bluegrass and all golf courses have a certain amount of it. At Bunker Hills, it's primarily in the fairways, which is why some of the fairways at Bunker Hills aren't perfectly green yet. Um, it's either dormant and there's some dead spots and you reseed those and they come back. Uh, the courses that were mentioned in the, in the newspaper and on the news are courses that have that on the greens. And if you have it on the greens, then that is a whole different set of circumstances. Thankfully, Bunker Hills does not. The greens are in fantastic condition, so. Excellent, good to hear. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Yep. All right, um, other business? Mr. Stemmuddle, anything? Mayor Council, I was just gonna mention there's a couple of events. Uh, coming up, I think, before our next council meeting. Um, in particular, I was going to just note that the home remodeling tour is scheduled for Sunday, May 19th from 12 to 4 p.m. And this is really an opportunity. Uh, we've, we've had some residents go through our Homes for Generations 2 program where they've done significant remodels of their homes. And so six people are opening up their home to residents, uh, whoever might, might want to pass through from uh, 12 to 4 p.m. to see that remodel that they completed, talk to the homeowner, talk to some contractors, things of that nature, to get a little better understanding of the program and what they may want to do to their house. So more information can be found on our city website at coonrapidsmn.gov. It's, it's tremendous, and I hope everybody should have gotten that flyer in the mail. Mm -hmm. And I encourage you to look through there, and especially if there's a house similar to yours or not, 
go through and get ideas. It's, we've had so many people that have signed up for that program from touring those homes mm -hmm. and said, oh, these are great possibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's fabulous. And literally, we, we can't thank those folks enough that open their homes up because it's literally hundreds of people that come through. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, I think it can be a little overwhelming, but it's yeah. really appreciated. <laughs> All right. Um, the other thing I want to do is I just one more reminder that Saturday, May 18th, Public Works Open House, 10 a.m. to noon. Make sure you get out there for that. It's a great, great event. Other business? Councilmember Kicker? Yeah, I'd like to just uh, uh, make a shout out to um, Jerry at CR Billiards. Um, I was at a benefit, I know Council Member Wells was at a benefit as well, of that same benefit last Saturday, for a local resident who, um, who has a rare bone cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it was, you know, all put on by local residents. Uh, uh, and it was amazing, $64,000 they, they raised, uh, and Jerry uh, does a lot of work for the community. He's always willing to help out. And uh, uh, during this particular event, mm -hmm. he's, he's kept track of this over the last, you know, like 10 and a half years that he's been doing these benefits. And so they, they got over the million dollar mark that they've generated in, um, in donations from people. So I just, you know, it was, it was really, really nice. A lot of people, you know, because it was mm -hmm. a Coon Rapids resident that's going through this, a family here in Coon Rapids. So it was really nice. Jerry does such a good job for the community, and I just wanted to throw that out there. It was a, it was a tremendous event. Yeah. And, and I think when he went into that event, he was sitting at like $986,000 or something. So he knew yeah. this event was going to take them over a yeah. million dollars raised. And right. to have somebody in the community that's that generous with their time, and boy, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. Yep. Yeah. All right, other business? Can motion somebody get us out of here? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Wells to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye. aye. we're adjourned. Aye.